I mean, the prizes actually don't reveal too much, do they? Because we've seen Mikago in a couple of different decks, and we've also seen Reshiram and Charizard GX in a couple of different decks. So you could be uh, fooled into thinking you're seeing a uh, Reshiram GX ability deck against maybe a Chinchino Mill deck <laughs> or, or some kind of Mill yeah. deck. Well, let's uh, let's shake that for you guys. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've got uh, Tord Rakulov will be playing uh, one of his classic uh, Mewtwo perfection styles of decks. And over on the other side, Yohei is playing this really interesting Magcargo GX attacking style variant where he's just trying to lava flow tag teams until they don't exist anymore. <laughs> I mean, that's one strategy. Why not? <laughs> just play very aggressively. I mean, that's what we've seen from a lot of the decks this weekend. Things like Pikachu and Zekrom GX as well. It's all about, well, in this case, firepower. Yes, this is firepower <laughs> is perfect. Uh, both these players are playing Welders, which is a card that we haven't seen that much of anymore. It's slowed down a little bit. Uh, just because of the opening turn rules, when you, know, you don't get to Welder on that first turn going first, it makes it just a little bit harder. So it looks like Yohei here is going to start with that Fiery Flint card, discarding two cards from your hand and picking up four energy from your deck. So obviously a very good card to have when you're pairing that with something like Welder. We'll see a Primate Wisdom. He's going to put one card back, draw a different card. Just a way to get around that, not being able to play a supporter on the first turn of the game. Of course, it looks like he knows his deck very well, and he's uh, well accustomed to it. Gonna head, uh, could go ahead and use that quick ball, shuffle the deck. That means that the card that he placed back on top, he's not going to see on the top of his deck any longer. Gets to shuffle that back, find himself a nice Slugma. Yeah, and that's ideally what Yohei's looking for, right? Putting down multiple basic Pokemon at the start of the game uh, to get the game rolling, but also to ensure that he isn't just left with a lone or Oranguru knocked out, and then that would be the game for Tord. So getting down basic Pokemon, really important here. That would be pretty rough. It looks like it's just going to be a touch and a pass over to Tord Reklev. So let's see how he's going to begin his turn. He will be able to play a supporter on the first turn, on his first turn, as he did not go first. Looks like he's going to go for Cherish Ball. Have a little look through his deck at what pieces might be prized, what strategies he can execute in this game. See, did, looking at, he's looking through a few of the GX Pokemon that he does have available. Does see his own Macago GX? <laughs> he's like, oh, that's what I'm playing against. All right, <laughs> let's let's read him one more time, pretty thoroughly. No, for Tord, I uh, I would expect him to try to go for a Welder strategy on this opening turn, if possible. And 120 damage is a pretty great number for him to take out that Orangaroo. So if he could work in a Sogaleo and maybe get some energies in his discard pile, we could see that uh, really start to accelerate energies, and then he'd have multiple Pokemon that could start to threaten this Mech Cargo GX that's potentially coming up soon. And is that also the strategy that uh, Tord is looking for here? Of course, accelerate energy onto the board, but just apply as much pressure as possible. Oh, yeah. He loves to go in, uh, be aggressive. When you're playing against a deck that requires so many energy cards in order to take a knockout, if you put them on the back foot at any one point and they, they miss, then it's completely going to uh, shift in your favor. It so. seems like the, that's the strategy that he might be looking for. Is playing a Cherish Ball brings that Sol Galeo GX straight to the front of the, uh, of the deck, but still looking through, just thinking, oh, there are other decisions that I can be making. But it looks like he's chosen that uh, Sol Galeo there. Yep, does have a Psychic Energy in hand. Uh, I almost think that he'll just choose to discard it, maybe to, to set up that Sogaleo's Turbo Strike. And maybe he just finds a Giant Hearth or some other option off of his Dedene that's uh, to be coming up soon. And of course, Dedene it does have the power of supporter of a supporter card, but it is not a supporter card. So once, even after you've Dedene changed, you can still play a supporter, something like that Welder, which you might find off the Dede change. Yeah, we're going back into the deck regardless of uh, <laughs> what the rules say. Tord's going to find as many opportunities as possible to get that deck shuffled up. So we see he's chosen to find a Jirachi there. Just another way to even look in your deck and pull out more cards. So Tord is definitely looking to get multiple pieces into his hand, give himself as many options as possible. But unlike a lot of decks, also get a lot of different cards into the discard pile that he can then copy with Mewtwo and Mew GX's perfection ability. Yep, so going to play it safe here, just in case he misses that giant hearth, wants to have the psychic energy on board. So now if he finds Welder, he just needs that one card, and then he's going to be on his way. We've got six cards here off Dead Age Change. I think he found his one of Professor Research. Doesn't, didn't find a switch either, so he can't just use Jirachi. And I don't think there's one card that really bails him out in this situation. So I don't think he's actually going to have a, a relevant attack available to him this turn. Looks like he's thinking about playing that Professor's Research, wondering if it's worth getting rid of the Reset Stamp and Great Catcher in his hand, and does decide that it is a good option. 
Yeah, that's actually both great catchers going down. So any Matt Cargo GX to be knocked out is going to have to c be from the active spot, likely. Does find a switch, which will put him into a Jirachi, which means he can dig a little bit further with that Stellar Wish ability. Looking at the top five cards of his deck, you can pick a trainer card there and put it into your hand. It's yeah, just another way to keep, keep drawing. It's a great way to set himself up for that following welder on the next turn. He does see it. It is in the five cards. He didn't grab it immediately, though, so you have to think... Is there some other strategy that he's looking for? But of course, takes the welder, recognizing that next turn, I can attach two energy with welder, one energy from hand. That's four energy on board. There's a multitude of different GX moves that Mew and Mew 2 GX can uh, copy. Yeah. When it has four energy. He can set himself up with a lot of different options. Curious if the great catchers are going to end up biting toward it in the end. That's pretty difficult that he had to discard both, but you just have to do it at this point of the game. You got to keep pushing through and try start to find uh, some s sort of way to combat a Mad Cargo GX. I think he just has to start giving the initiative uh, to Yohei at this point and then have that counter attack ready. So one of the great things about Jirachi, it's not a one, it's not a once per turn total ability that you can use. It's once per Jirachi that you can put into the active spot. So right. utilizing a skateboard and switch to get multiple Jirachis into the active position means you can stellar wish multiple times, find multiple cards. Get yourself yeah. really set up for that next turn. And Tord also sees the escape board but doesn't immediately play it. There's really no reason to play it right now. Just go ahead and wait that one more turn, and then if you need to, if this Jirachi does uh, continue on, then you can use it. But hey, just go ahead and play them all <laughs> anyways. Maybe you get reset stamped on the first turn. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Stealthy Hood comes down onto Mewtwo and Mew GX as well, and that's a pass from Tord there. It's really interesting. The Welder build compared to the one we saw Henry Brand play doesn't really have any one... Uh, Energy cost attacks with the psychic energy at least that it can copy. So it really does rely on having that welder and attaching multiple energy to that tag team Pokemon. Yohei here, just having a look at what Tord has used already. Maybe he sees those two great two great catches and kind of recognizes that any Makago GX he puts on the bench might be safe. But that's a welder and a double attached to an Oranguru. That's not really his priority target. Yeah, this is Pretty wild. I'm going to go ahead and use the, the Great Ball there as well, see if he can find some more Pokemon. Does find that Mad Cargo GX. You would have thought that would be the Pokemon that he'd like to weld it to. I don't think that's where he wanted to put it, but he didn't want to put all of his eggs in one basket there with the Slugma, so he's just going to go ahead and spread them around. Lots of different options available to him, though. He does have things like Pokemon Communication. He has Quick Ball in hand as well. Means he can find lots of different cards. One thing I love is the way Great Ball has actually come back into the game. Yeah, it's cool to it's cool to see uh, one of those top seven effects. We've had those all uh, in the training card game. We've seen top seven, bottom seven, all sorts of stuff. Uh, it's it's a little bit risky. You might not always find a Pokemon. Right. But when you do, it it feels like so much value. Right. And then oh. we see a combination with Pokemon communication. So really find any Pokemon from the top seven with that Great Ball. <laughs> put it back in and get anything you want. And get what you actually want. Yeah. In this case, it looks like Yohei's going for another Slugma. Just in case the Slugma he has already somehow knocked out, it leaves him with another option to find a Makago GX. Or a Makago with Smooth Over. Yeah, it looks like this first Slugma, just because it has the energy, is going to be the Mad Cargo GX target. But the other one definitely could be a Smooth Over uh, on the following ah, turn. Okay. So I think that's a reason he wouldn't really like to see that Oranguru in the active position uh, if we assume it's going to get knocked out next turn because he does like to have that combination of smooth over Makago with that Oranguru Primate Wisdom ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a great way to continue pushing through his deck, finding welders, maybe finding just that one extra card that you need every turn. Don't know if we're going to see the WAP down <laughs> <laughs> come in. Hey, it'll do enough. 70 damage. <laughs> that's true. Then we also see an Island Amulet. Island Challenge Amulet has actually come down onto the Slugma. That is not a, an item card that we've actually seen played all weekend. Yeah, that's a, it's pretty interesting. We, we saw a lot of these in Japanese decks uh, for Expanded, but uh, in the over for, for Standard, this wasn't something that we were expecting to see a lot of. Uh, their, their format's wildly different than ours, so when we see it get played, we're like, okay, is that really going to translate into <laughs> the game that we know on the other side of the world? And sometimes when they do, they do in a big way. You know, right. often you see these players from Japan come over to the World Championships and they're bringing something very, very different and they often do really well. Yeah. So the, uh, just 
knowing that my cargo is rather fragile, you can go ahead and just uh, give but, it but we that <laughs> island amulet, just c knowing that eh, you're probably going to take these prizes anyways. It's like he doubles down on that Oranguru there. <laughs> the whap down. I mean, hey, we've seen slap. We've seen a uh, slap attack from Jirachi all weekend, so why not whap down? Oh, yeah. It also looks like he's getting a few energy onto this uh, Makago GX as well. One of the great things about Makago is, yes, you have to discard energy with its Lava Flow attack, but it sort of has a lot of synergy inbuilt in with its crushing uh, charge ability, able to essentially just put energy onto itself, you know, if you're lucky enough to get it to the top. Great synergy with Makago Smooth Over. Yeah, no, that works great. It's a great way to get some extra energies out there for you, and then you can start to set up to KO these uh, tag team Pokemon that are going to be over uh, on the, the other side there for Tord. So as you uh, start to distract him with an Oranguru in the active, you're slowly building up a pretty big beast on the bench. And you can do that when you've seen that Tord's already discarded two great catches. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you're not too concerned about uh, maybe a Naganadel Snipe uh, coming down. You haven't uh, put the amulet on there just yet, so you've got a little bit of time. But Todd now, having a look through his discard pile, you'll see Mewtwo and Mew GX players do that quite often, as they want to see what GX Pokemon they can copy, which attacks are available to them, uh, and which resources they might have thrown away already. Especially like Welder counts. Welder is a pretty big card in this deck, especially when it's your only way to accelerate energy. That is right. Curious now what the play is for Tord. Did only get one energy out because he what, didn't have access to that welder. We do see that he does have the welder now, and he does have the giant heart, so he's going to get those four energies. But what attack is going to be his best option here? Searching his deck now. Grabs those two. Continuously looks through his deck as well, just to see exactly what's there. Thinking so many turns ahead. What pieces can I string together to be able to achieve knockouts? Where are the six prizes I can take on the board? Yep, I'm wondering if uh, Latios is a, is a good play here. Maybe Tag Purge could start to in be incorporated into uh, towards strategy. It does play the Welder, choosing to attach the two fire energy to the Mewtwo that doesn't have the psychic energy attached. Ah, okay. So I think this hints more towards um, using Sogaleo and then uh, using Turbo Strike onto the other Mewtwo. Can still attach from, uh, fr from hand as well, sorry. Welder does not count as your attachment from hand for the turn. Also, he unfortunately hasn't gotten any energies into the discard pile just yet, so looks like he's going to go ahead and do that just now for us. Searches for another Pokemon. I mean, which Pokemon does he have left? He's discarded quite a few already into the discard <laughs> pile. Why not Blacephalon? <laughs> <laughs> it could be an interesting way to, to sneak some prizes later. Yeah, certainly if Yohei's forcing Tord to maybe take one prize at a time with that island amulet. Yeah. So we'll keep that in our back pocket, think about it for later. Uh, it could just be a, a sneaky way to get some damage placed down later in the game, maybe on that exact uh, three prize card spot, just so you can get the 12. It just looks he's going to play down the Blacephalon. Really thinking about whether he's going to dead a change or not. There's a welder in hand, which is a pretty valuable resource. I don't even know if he wants to take anything off of that. He, Jirachi did find him a switch, but he has a switch in hand already. Yeah, he's just going to shuffle it all back. That's n not what he was looking for there. It's like Tord, very afraid of that Oranguru. Who, who would have known? <laughs> Puts in so much work. I mean, it's been his best friend. It's won him a, <laughs> a, a few uh, tournaments, a few international even. Yep, goes into the Mewtwo and Mew GX. Looks like he's going to copy that Turbo Strike attack of Solgaleo GX. 120 damage coming down onto the board and can accelerate up to two basic energy cards from the discard pile onto his benched Pokemon. But there was only one, so you can only target one. Not really the optimal Turbo Strike he was probably looking for there. It yeah. does, does give himself a prize, though. Yeah, usually you see Tord and he's got nine energies by now. <laughs> this is this has not been going his way just yet. He's just been drawing the cards in the wrong order, it seems. Hasn't been able to find the right combination, but still being able to take that knockout there for himself, remove what was actually a pretty important target in the Oranguru, just because you want to uh, remove options along with 
uh, switching out those cards along with smooth over. So uh, make Yohei have to work just a little bit harder, and he's going to try to do that with all of the balls that he has available to him. I think for the first time this weekend, we see a Mag Cargo GX with more than one energy attached to it. <laughs> Yeah, he's, uh, he's usually just used to using his, uh, his GX attack and finishing the game right there and there. But instead, Homeboy's going to try to give us a 300 damage attack. <laughs> and it is, it is achievable as well in this kind of deck. Yeah, this is, this is something that, that can happen here. If you get the crushing charge along with your attachment for the turn and a welder, then you're looking at uh, six energies potentially in a turn. And you only really need five because it's a 50-plus attack. So... We could see him even get some energies onto an, a Slugma and start to set up for that second Mewtwo that's waiting in the way. So we see another Great Ball now. It has to be the fourth Great Ball that's played. Looks like Yohei's really prioritizing that in his build. Yeah, he's, he's played so many Quick Ball and Great Ball. He really just likes to burn through his deck, essentially, and just make it so that it's only uh, Welders and Fire Energies. And if he gets to that spot, he is feeling pretty good. Uh, sometimes he could even uh, use his Macargo's ability without having to set the top deck and just be pretty sure that he's got a fire energy coming for him. And one thing we haven't seen, though, yet is that Macargo with Smooth Over. That has not come into play yet, and you would have thought that was a, a crucial part of Yohei's strategy here in getting that fire energy to the top of the deck. Yeah, it would be helpful, especially if um, he did have... The extra, yeah, it looks like he is going to try to set up the, the other Macargos. He does have the Ditto, so maybe we could see that come down um, on this turn as well. Of course, there has to be some kind of management, and you only run four Slugma and one Ditto Prism, so you can't actually really, you know, you have to manage where you're going to put your, your Macargos and your Macargo right. GX and <laughs> how many you could actually fight with or, or use as supporting Pokemon. He plays six Macargo, which is <laughs> almost illegal, but it's uh, because uh, they have the different name there. Well, you still only have to work with the, the four Slugma, so adding that Ditto is a great way to, to give yourself that extra slot. And Yohei, having a look here, seeing if you can find the right pieces to put together this potential one-hit knockout on the Mewtwo and Mew GX. Something that a lot of Pokemon often struggle to do. I am seeing a couple more Orangurus. Yeah, it looks like he found multiple uh, Orangurus, and he's got some energy, a... Fire Crystal as well, and the supporter for the turn could potentially be a research, and he's going to just dump everything. Ooh. Here we go. So that's all three Oranguru oh, hitting that's the discard pile. Terrifying. Towards like, um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, that's the cost. It looks like Yohei did find another crystal, so he's going to go ahead and eye down a few of these fire energies. Not sure if he has the welder. Actually, I do see the welder there, too. So this did work out very well for him. He's not going to be able to do it this turn, of course. But he will be set up to have some energies on the following turn. Yeah, I'm just a little bit worried about those three Oranguru hitting the discard pile. It's another way that you can potentially uh, use crushing, getting the, the best out of crushing charge ability of Makago GX. That's right. Of course, having two detonate GX on the bench doesn't help you. They take up bench space. Oh, look at this. <laughs> the Denny with an amulet. Is, uh, here, you can have one prize <laughs> for this, this Pokemon that you're so used to taking off the board with multiple prize cards. So, uh, interesting style here. Uh, Yohei is going to buy himself that one turn, and one prize really doesn't matter to him when he is exchanging uh, potentially one or two prizes for three on a tag team. So it looks like this could work out fairly well for him does give Tord the opportunity to just continue accelerating energy onto his board with Turbo Strike as well, though. Um, yeah. Sort of setting up his side of the board and, and his strategy. Just depends if Tord's able to get some energies into the discard pile. That's been pretty hard for him to do here. Maybe he decides to go with um, a Naganadel Snipe play on this turn, if he could somehow work that out. And then he'd also have some energies in the discard pile for when these Turbo Strike turns start to look a little more uh, appealing. And that does get around that... Uh, Island Amulet as well. He doesn't yeah. have to play into that strategy that Yohei... Yeah, I'll, I'll well. take that prize later. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't take prizes when you tell me to, Yohei. <laughs> and one piece is down. He's played that giant hearth, uh, able to get two fire energy into his hand that he can then potentially accelerate onto the board with something like a welder or discard uh, with many of his discard options. Board being very calculated with what he's doing. 
thinking, what's the best strategy for now, but also for the next couple of turns? Looks like we will see that welder come down. It's going to put two energy onto the bench to Mewtwo and Mew GX. Yeah, I wonder if he can find the switch. It looks like he does have multiple switch in hand now, so he could go ahead and use that Naganadel and uh, get a nice snipe down on one of these Pokemon that he feels maybe is a threat, or maybe he wants to increase his prize count by taking the other Dedenne off of the board. We'll really have to see what he chooses here. And is it worth just placing damage onto a bench to Makago GX? Almost. I was, I was thinking about it because 170 and then following up maybe with that Blacephalon, if you could, you could just, even if placing for four damage counters, you could go ahead and remove uh, that Macargo off the board. You could also snipe uh, the Macargo with the Amulet. And even though it's worth one prize, you just remove another potential threat off of the board. It's, it's interesting to, to, to see what Tord values as the biggest threat here. It looks like he's weighing it up. Having a look at how many energy were on the uh, Macargo that does have energy attached to it. Tort's already counting his deck. <laughs> this, this isn't Mill? He's thinking of the GX. He's, uh, he's played a little <laughs> too many of these Mill games here. But it's something you have to be aware of in a deck that just, you know, draws through its, through its cards so quickly. It looks like he's going to uh, use that attack and get rid of Dedene GX from the side of Yohei's bench. Yeah, I agree with this play. I think it's uh, a smart call from Tord. You just play the prize race. You know that your opponent, if they get their strategy off, they're probably going to win because... He is very good at removing multiple tag team Pokemon. And yeah, I think Yohei just says, ah, I'm not, I can't get there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and scoop this one up. So I think there were a couple of turns where maybe he just missed the, the combination that he needed to be able to maybe get that one hit knockout on the Mewtwo, which was the play that he was really going for. A little bit unfortunate that he had to discard a few key cards or the, like Oranguru, and the fact that he had to start with one as well is a, a little bit troubling. Uh, what kind of approach could he go for this time to maybe Give himself more of an advantage, Yohei. Yeah, so for Yohei, I, I think if he's got all the right cards to do it, and we know that his deck can work uh, in, in the way that it has, as obviously he's taken eight matches already. So if he does get the optimal bench, I feel like he's going to be in a better spot. He had to just fill it with awkward cards. But if he gets that, s that smooth over my cargo along with a Rangaroo, and he gets to use them all in tandem together to start charging up his my cargo GXs, then he's going to be in a better spot. So maybe just buying a couple turns with uh, like uh, um, even a, an Orangaroo in the active spot once more, but just having that bench space available to use a second uh, Orangaroo and start to add all of those energies to your board will put you in a great spot. And I was a little bit worried at the beginning there when I, I believe you just had an Orangaroo and found one Slugma. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to see if Yohei maybe chooses to go second this time. That's a discussion we've been having all weekend, which is do you decide to go first and potentially leave yourself in a position where you could just be knocked out in the first turn with a lone attacker? Uh, or do you go second and ensure that you can use the supporter and maybe set up a little bit? Yeah, we saw this with um, the seniors game that we actually just had uh, featured earlier with the abilities are uh, mirror match. And both players wanted to go second in that matchup because the welder was so crucial to the opening setup. But Yohei's deck is just a tad bit slower, so he doesn't mind missing on a welder on the, that very first turn. He has other options available to him. He also wants to be... Uh, first to evolve and get all of his uh, abilities uh, rolling for himself. So I'm not sure if he actually values going first or second more. We'll get to see here because he does have the option now that he has lost the first game. And he does play cards that will prevent that uh, just leading with a single attacker and not having anything else. Things like that new quick ball card that came out in the latest expansion. Really, really helpful to just find basic Pokemon, especially on that first turn. Yep, you'd hope that he would be able to get a few more Slugma out into play, maybe even that ditto for himself. Looks like he has prized two welders. Yeah, that's, that, that's going to be challenging. That's going to be very challenging to get all the energy he needs. But it looks like towards uh, one very interesting prize guard there is that Solgaleo GX. It means that he won't be able to start using that Turbo Strike attack that he does like to copy to get energy onto the board early in the game. Yeah, back when he was playing his Shedinja style of Mewtwo Perfection, he actually played two copies of Solgaleo because it was so important to him. And he has cut that down to one, <laughs> and it is in his prizes. And it looks like it's uh, pretty much the same things happening from the first game, leading with an Oranguru, starting with a Fiery Flint. Monkey business. <laughs> Opting to get rid of that professor's research as well. Recognizing, well, I can't play it this turn. Yep. We so do see a quick ball, so it's not just going to be a lone Oranguru. Yeah, I believe feared. we also see, um, I 
think it was a Pokemon communication in his hand as well, so should be able to, to get multiple Slugma down if he chooses. Maybe he's uh, looking to turn that Slugma into the Macargo that's already in his hand, so uh, could just take that turn uh, to use uh, Orangaroo and maybe see if he top decks another Pokemon too. But I think when you're playing against something like this Mewtwo and Mew GX that can be so aggressive, uh, you, really ha you really have to get down multiple basics and get your, your strategy rolling as quickly as possible. Yeah. Oh, well, oh. look at that. <laughs> that's a good, that's that's a good uh, top deck there. Ideal, <laughs> ideal top deck. Primate Wisdom. Getting that second Slugma. It looks like that would be a pass from Yohei as well. Yeah, this is a pretty impressive opening turn without a supporter. He, we know that his hand is also pretty gassed up. He does have that Welder and two energies. He does have a Micargo. So he should be able to do just about anything that he desires here uh, on this following turn now. Now it's really up to Tord looking at interesting cards that don't have Giant Hearth. So let's see if we find Giant Hearth. So you look at his face and he looked kind of worried, but he actually has a lot of options available to him. He's just calculating. I'm gonna find that Cherish Ball. Usually to find a Pokemon just to discard. Yeah. Um, he does have so many Pokemon that he wants to have access to by way of perfection. But maybe focused on setting up his board here the first time around. I I believe he does have a Mewtwo in hand already, so uh, could just be looking to see, hey, where's so Sogaleo? Uh-oh. Hey, where's Sogaleo? <laughs> uh, I'll just uh -oh. check again. I'll check again. <laughs> this, this isn't happening. He thinks, oh, I knew I should have played two. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he's bringing that Reshiram and Charizard GX up to the front. Yeah, that's interesting. Maybe just taking count, taking stock. Which GX Pokemon do I have available to me? We breeze past Giant Hearth. He would have loved to see that in his opening hand to pair with Welder. Sometimes you can build your deck as consistently as you want, and you just don't find the right cards at the right time. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get rid of that Charizard GX with the Quick Ball, finding a Den Deden GX. Strategy we've seen all weekend. Yeah, this is this is kind of towards bread and butter. It's just use the Dene, try to find that Welder plus uh, Hearth combo or Welder plus Fire Energies combination. He hasn't been able to get there just yet, so uh, use it, just use Dene as a reset button and try to get there on the following turn. Quite a lot of resources in his hand that he would like to see when he had Fire Energy in his hand as well, so it'd be very interesting to see if he chooses to discard those with Dead a, uh, GX's Dead A Change ability. Yeah, even if he had a switching effect, he could use another Jirachi and try to see if he could find a Hearth, but it just looks to be missing that one piece in all of these situations. <laughs> Does have energy for the turn that he can use in that, uh, that weakness card energy. Really thinking about it, really deliberating about what he's going to play, what he's going to put down. I did see a Psychic Pokemon in his hand. I do believe it's a Mewtwo and Mew. Yeah, it's, it's so hard to discard a Welder. It's just something that he's conditioned himself not to do. <laughs> but it looks like he's going to have to. Oh. Yeah, he's biting the bullet. So both players are going to have to play with fewer Welder this game. And there he finds the switches that he needed earlier. Okay. <laughs> All switching effects, in fact. Yeah, this is a really odd hand for him. He has a, a bunch of different ways to continue to use Jirachi, and maybe he can find some of the, the Hearth plus Welder combinations for the following turn, but it looks like this turn is going to be just another turn off. And this is not what I expected to see from Todd's deck. I expected to see energy everywhere, first, second turn. Yeah, and... I mean, we got to see a little hint that uh, with Sogaleo in the prize cards that it wasn't going to be uh, maybe his game of the match, but it really is starting to not look like his game here. A Cherish Ball again will find him another GX Pokemon to put into hand, perhaps to discard it, but also just to thin his deck a little bit, help him with his draws off that Stellar Wish or his draw for next turn. He does have a skateboard and switches, so he can go into a second Stellar Wish. Yeah, I think that Stellar Wish could be pretty beneficial for him to find at least 
one more piece, and then it just makes it just a little bit easier on the following turn. Um, if he finds the hearth now, maybe he finds the welder or vice versa. And get some use out of this hand before he considers using Dedenne one more time, because he doesn't want to use just hold on to these switching effects without using them to their full potential. And it does look like he will retreat using that escape board. Uh, Jirachi comes into the active position, and we're going to see a second Stellar Wish, looking at five cards from the top of his deck. Does find a quick ball, does find a welder. Yeah, he actually drew the wrong card. <laughs> he, he wanted to see the hearth first, because then if he misses with Jirachi's Stellar Wish on the following turn for welder, then he's like, ah, that's no big deal. I'll just Dedenne and see if I find it. But if he grabs the welder now, and he doesn't find the hearth on the following turn, he's in the same exact spot where he has to Dedenne away a welder. And he doesn't want to do that two, games, uh, two times in a row in the same game. He knows that'll just absolutely decimate any chances that he had. All the right pieces, but all in the wrong order. Yeah, this is, Seems this to be is the story of Tord's game at the moment. So I, I do like this. It's a little more conservative approach. Just going to take the quick ball. So I really love Welder, and I can't pass you up, but I'm going to pass you up this time around. Well, I mean, if you look across at Yohei's board, you think, there's not much happening. I'm not seeing much threat over there. Yeah, but four cards and a Ranguru. I'm not scared of a Slugma, <laughs> but oh, <laughs> you should be. As we discussed earlier, combination of cards, it could end up in a powerful, powerful attack with Lava Flow. Yeah, this hand is saucing. <laughs> goes. Double energy onto the Oranguru again. This is again. just his play, man. He loves it. <laughs> he doesn't like Jirachi. Yeah. Not a fan of that card. Uh, maybe this is just like a conservative approach uh, to putting some pressure on your opponent, but also not putting everything that you have into Macargo. Uh, if Tord were able to find three energies and a great catcher, he could, of course, just uh, take out that Mag Cargo with the uh, Reshiram at Charizard um, 230 damage attack, so... And he's thinking really hard about whether he wants to play that giant hearth. Yeah, he's like, oh, he doesn't. <laughs> he needs this, but I need this. <laughs> we need this. Then he's just going to have a look through his deck now, and he's going to Pokemon Communication. Looks like Nine Tails. Yeah, I think that was one of those Nine Temptation Nine Tails, uh, which we saw in the last game with the in the senior division. Just how important that card can be. Yeah, it actually could be important in other matchups. I feel like you always see a Mewtwo in the active spot. Tord is going to show you exactly what you want. Uh, and he's just going to hope that Tord's going to hope you don't have the answer to it on this turn. But So we aren't going to see that being too useful here. Instead, going to go for that Dedenne. He looks like he should be able to play nearly the rest of this hand down if he wants to. Uh, chooses not to. And I, I think this is the right play. Don't give Tord any more ammunition. You're already doing pretty great. And Tord's having a look and saying, could you have played that instead? Yeah, that would have been great. You want that in the middle of the yeah. field, sir. <laughs> we'll see Yohei does get down that Mad Cargo as well, the one that has uh, Smooth Over as the ability. So that, I think that's going to be really important in this game in combination with Oranguru's Primate Wisdom. Both players looking through the discard piles. Tord got to see Yohei has two welders gone already. Tord with the one gone. We do have the information that Yohei is down... Uh, two welders, so that is every welder in his deck that is gone. That's actually going to be pretty disappointing for him. Yeah, maybe he's just got the read. Maybe he was looking through with his quick balls and said, "Oh, I'm going to need to take prizes with this Oranguru, so I'm going to just uh, push aggressively one more time. Maybe that'll give me the welders that I need to push through and take these big Mad Cargo GX uh, knockouts." And we'll see Smooth over for the first time in this series. My boy from 2000. And Six. <laughs> Good old days of Ludi Cargo and hey, you all to, sorts you of stuff. Wonder, is that the card that Yohei played at the World Championships then? I mean, it, it did get a little more hit points or something. I think something very subtly changed. I think they actually removed one of his attacks. It did 10 damage and removed a stadium or something. So they actually had to <laughs> decrease its power level because the card was so it was too good. strong, too strong. I would be curious. I actually, we know his, his opponent uh, from that top 16, so <laughs> we'll have to ask and see <laughs> if he remembers. Now we see the Primate Wisdom. Great synergy with Makago GX there with its crushing charge ability. <gasps> Does he hit it? Oh! <laughs> it's a miracle. Does attach an energy to that Oranguru, and it is going to take the knockout in that Jirachi as well. Yeah, whap it down. Very similar start for Yohei in that sense. Yeah. A little bit of a better board setup, I would say, though. And can you imagine if Tord had some energies and a, a Sogaleo to go into this? Because he would feel so better. 
if, if, if he had anything to, uh, of the sort. Instead, he's probably going to have to put all of his energies uh, onto this Mewtwo to find a relevant attack that can take the knockout. And he's not going to have anything set up uh, on the bench for himself here. So really, really awkward. Yeah, and a lot of the other attacks that he has access to often have a little bit of drawback as well. Like you have to discard energy cards or you then can't attack again the next turn. Yeah. As far as uh, attacks that he has available to him, could potentially see um, Mega Low Punny as an option. Maybe even Tag Purge just does enough damage, even though the effect won't get you very far. Let's find a Jirachi with that Quick Ball. He's going to keep digging. He's going to keep wishing. He's... Got a few more wishes he needs granted if he's going to give us a good showing here. This looks pretty difficult for Tor to come back from. Uh, of course, we do know that Yohei was down on those welders. Not sure if he was able to take one out of the prizes there. Still does have a couple of switching effects, so he still will be able to Stellar Wish a couple more times. Try and find that, that combination of welder and, and giant hearth. Then we see a Stellar Wish. Looks at the top five cards of the deck. Choose a trainer card you see there and put it in your hand. Ooh, but it looks like it's just going to be Stealthy Hood and Reset Stamp. This These are not the right wishes. Yeah, he's just not looking at the right star. It's just not happening for him. Tor just finding these awkward cards, going to accessorize instead of... Oh, there's a welder. Oh, <laughs> that's, it's that easy. <laughs> But it still isn't seeing energy. I don't think I've seen energy in Tord's hand this game. Yeah, no, you're, you're right on it. We've only seen that, that weakness guard energy, which is not something that is relevant at all. And there's a switch going back into another Stellar Wish. Probably all his switches used now, I believe. He's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, this looks like the right call here. Go ahead and use that to Dene. Look for six cards. See if you can find... A combination of welder plus energy. Let Jirachi find you the other piece, hopefully. There we go, six cards. Oh, I see here welders. we go. Yep. I see one energy. This is starting to look a little better. Now Tori has to decide how greedy he wants to go with it. Does he want to use his Jirachi and find that giant hearth, potentially? It would give his opponent access to m multiple energies as well, so maybe that would be just as uh, enough to get him over the edge and let Yohei take a huge tag team knockout. Looks at the top five. Mine's there it hearth. is. Yeah. So it's important to Tord. He does need to get those energies for himself. It looks like he also did find that Megalopony, so he has that attacker lined up for himself. Could prove pretty important here. Currently attacking for 180. As there are two GX Pokemon out. Almost enough. Almost enough to get a knockout on that Makago GX. Certainly enough to knock out the Orange Guru. He's going to look through his deck now, find two Fire Energy with that giant hearth. Continues to have a look through the, though. This is what you'll see with some of the, you know, the better players in the world. They'll just continue to continually look through their deck, see what options are available to them, what combinations of cards they can play. Yeah, I think the two cards that he really eyed up, we we did get to see potentially reset stamp could prove beneficial after you remove the uh, Orangaroo, uh, smooth over only becomes a real vessel for fire energies at that point and on the other side uh, he we saw his great catcher counts so maybe he's uh, potentially eyeing up holding out uh, and going for a 230 damage attack into a Metcargo GX. And that's the first welder of the game I believe we've seen uh, from Tord there going onto the Mewtwo and Mew GX on the bench so it now does have three energy and is able to uh, copy attacks from the bench or the discard pile, using that perfection ability, Todd can still attach one from hand onto a Pokemon of his choosing. It looks like he's going to pick the Psychic Energy and put it onto the bench. Mewtwo and Mew GX, he just played down. And now yep. bringing that Mewtwo and Mew into the active position to copy an attack. It seems like Megalopony should be the choice here. I love also attaching that Psychic Energy. You want to make sure that you have all the fire energies available to you to welder, so just use any other energy that isn't fire as often as possible as your attachment for the turn. So he is taking, he has taken that one prize, and that one prize is that Solgaleo GX. 
maybe just a little late. <laughs> but I don't actually I don't know how many fire energies he was even able to, or any energies he was able to get into the discard pile for himself. And Yohei here. No welders, but still lots of energy in play thanks to that Makago GX's crushing charge ability and attachments from turn. From hand, rather. For turn. <laughs> we got there. So, Yohei is looking through his deck, trying to see what the best option is with Smooth Over. Looks like he's going to go for his buddy Oranguru. Yeah, it does run three, so it's putting a lot of um, hope in that card. The core part of his strategy. Although he had a second think. <laughs> yeah, no. Being, being specific to hold that finger down on the card as to say, I'm not choosing this just yet. Uh, Tord is asking about that to see if he's chosen just yet. But Oh, looks like going back to Oranguru. Yeah. We'll have to see, can he get enough energy onto this Magcargo GX to achieve a knockout? He does need five. Yeah, he would need. He already, he's already attached for the turn, so he would need to have multiple Mad Cargo, and he'd need to use both the abilities for success and hit on to his active. Gonna go ahead and dump Dead the amulet. Change. Gets himself a fresh hand of cards to work with. Does see an orange guru in there, of course. <laughs> that worked out great. <laughs> can, so he can go ahead and put one of those cards uh, in that fire energy is on the top. Can uh, place that on now. Does have the other mech cargo. Does he just have to risk oh. it? Oh, he does, and he Doesn't misses. Doesn't get the energy. Oh, that's so rough. Just imagine if he, if he does get that there for himself. He'd take this huge knockout instead. Does not have that available to him. Thinking about going ahead and cashing in on this damage that he can do. Doesn't want to just... Uh, take a knockout right now uh, as he did really play into the uh, the mega low punny at this point. He knows that he's going to be knocked out and this just plays right back into Tord's position. Imagine if Tord was able to get off uh, a miraculous duo or at this point or something like that. He could just completely take all this damage off the board. Yeah, pretty rough spot for Yohei. All his energy missing and we know that he doesn't have access to welder either so you've got to think how many energy can he actually get into play in any one turn yeah that was i mean for what he had that was exactly the the, the correct call there were no other welders so at one point he was going to have to risk it took that risk and it just didn't pay off for him now toward here possibly recognizing that the momentum has definitely swung into his favor yep. he has so many different gx moves and moves of GX Pokemon that he can copy to put himself even further ahead. And that's just the power of this uh, perfection ability. Yeah, he may also not even be concerned about uh, his opponent uh, taking a Pokemon Dragon into the active spot. It's hard to include a lot of great catchers or something in this build for yourself. So uh, even just retreating at this point or a switching effect uh, could mean that that Mewtwo is safe for a little bit of time. We do see a switch, switch there into that Jirachi. It's going to Stellar Wish again. Strategy you'll see some of the pro players just use over and over again. They really want to have a look in their deck. They want to get as many resources and cards in their hand as they can. Does find himself a great catcher. So could start to eye up the last few prizes that Tord needs to start closing out on this game. There is only six minutes left in this game. He did take the game one. It's so like he chooses the reset stamp. Yeah, not sure if... I mean, I, I don't, I'm surely he's, he's not thinking about pl playing it just yet, but to get that out of his deck, maybe to help him uh, get to some other cards that he wants to find soon. A psychic energy would be almost game-breaking at this point. Can still attach an energy from turn. Look like it's going to go onto that undamaged benched Mewtwo and Mew GX, which will come into the active position. Does have four energies to work with when copying an attack. Yep. Which I believe gives it access to pretty much energy, uh, any of the attacks 
Yeah, who needs four deck. when you can just use three? <laughs> <laughs> Megaloplenty is going to get the job done. And Todd Reklev goes down to three prizes, three prizes until he nets himself nine wins at this tournament. And this is a long road with no welders. Yohei back against the wall. Yeah, you have to be wondering, what's his strategy to come back into this? You're, you're staring down a completely fresh Mewtwo and Mew GX, and you don't have to knock out one of them. You have to knock out one and another Pokemon that's going to give you two prizes. Yeah, he <laughs> he's in a really tough spot. I th honestly, uh, just the amount of GX Pokemon that he's played means that he almost needs to uh, sacrifice this active Dedenne, let it uh, be knocked out, and then just hope that Tord doesn't have access to an impressive four card attack. Maybe a three energy attack from um, the Mega Lopunny would be enough for him to, to work through. So now he's really just hoping, hey, I if you have this great catcher, we're in a lot of trouble. That's exactly the strategy that he went for, left that Dedenne GX in the active spot. Placed some energies onto that Magcargo GX and said, okay, you'll move toward. What can you do? I d actually don't see it from toward just yet. So. He did have it in the Stellar Wish earlier and chose not to take it. May have been thinking to himself, well, if any Pokemon does get knocked out, that's the only time I'm really threatened. And at that point, I would just use Dedenne and burn through my whole deck to get to where I need to be. But continuing to thin his deck there does have to be kind of aware of that Mad Cargo GX's GX move as well that could come out of nowhere. You always have to be thinking about that in the back of your mind when you're true. trying to discard cards from your deck. We're getting, we're getting fairly low here. Yeah, he says, all right, I'll just take my knockout. I, th I appreciate your donation. <laughs> oh, the last Reckler? card is that psychic energy. One oh. energy, uh, sorry, one prize card left for the game. He needs one more knockout to take this win and move on to nine wins here at the International Championships. And let's see if Yohei Takeda can stop him. It's like he's going to quick ball, look through his deck, finds that Oranguru card he's really been prioritizing throughout both of these matches. Looks like he is out of fire energies in his deck, but does have a uh, couple fire crystals available to him, so maybe he could work that in for Ooh, himself. Ooh, nine tails there. Ah, yes, yeah, so this is one way that he could actually uh, start to uh, put some aggression on, maybe take a knockout, but he does then have a uh, four-energy Mewtwo staring him down. Nine Tails with his nine temptations ability, discarding two fire energy to effectively bring up any Pokemon on your uh, opponent's bench into the active position. It often give you quite a lot of control in the game as you choose what you're knocking out. You don't allow your opponent to dictate which Pokemon you can attack into. Using that Fire Crystal to get three Fire Energy back, great synergy with that Ninetales. He's actually selecting that Dedenne GX. Netting himself two prizes, and you know he's probably hoping to see those Welder that he's prized. Yeah, that would be helpful for him. Maybe he could finally get over the hump there. Also could just attack and pass off. I think we are going to see the answer there. Yeah, he does have that escape uh, skateboard, so he could go ahead and retreat and take the knockout with that Rush Ramage Charizard attack. 230 damage would remove that Macargo from play. I think the players do see it. We are going to pick it up here toward Reklev. 2-0 in this uh, match here. Going to move on to 9-2 in the tournament. I don't think sadly for Yohei, the writing was on the wall sort of maybe halfway through that game when yeah. he just missed that big knockout on that Mewtwo and Mew GX. It was very, very difficult to come back from that. And also, in the Pokemon trading card game, there is a bit of variance on what you have as prizes. And unfortunately for Yohei, a key part of his strategy, two of them were prized out of the four. So it's really difficult to come back from a situation like that, especially when you're staring down something like Mewtwo and Mew GX that's just so aggressive. Yeah, it, it, it's... You need every single one of those. When I was looking at these lists originally, I was curious as to why they wouldn't play a pal pad. Just thinking that it's it's so crucial to get those extra welders. Sometimes you may even need a fifth welder. Or just things happen in the game. Maybe uh, playing that Mewtwo that can put that welder back on the top of your deck. I know that uh, just having the bench space is difficult, but sometimes you do just have that opening. You really just need that one more welder to push you over the edge. Yeah. It's also pretty cool that you could just put it on the top of your deck and uh, you have got some pretty interesting interactions with uh, Oranguru that you could work out there. So. And we saw Yohei uh, use those interactions as well, utilizing Smooth Over and that crushing charge ability of Makago GX. 
Orin Guru as well. So we saw the real power of that deck and how it can all come together. It just didn't seem to come together at the right times for Yohei when he needed it to. Yeah, and it, it's uh, unfortunate that he didn't get to showcase the deck on stream as well as he'd like to. But we know that this deck is successful. His, his record speaks for himself, and he's certainly not out of the event as well. He has uh, a few more rounds to prove himself. He can get that uh, top eight spot locked up and give himself another opportunity.